Hi, I'm Tammy, the owner of Cary Hardware, located at 2100 West North Avenue in Baltimore, Maryland. Cary Hardware has been in my family since 1982, and then I took over in 2017. I stayed in this community because I've been here, the customers know my name, I've seen families, children grow up, and I've been in the neighborhood since I was young. I'm not going nowhere, they don't want me to go anywhere. Some of them can't get to Home Depot, some of them can't get to Lowe's, so everybody can't get out of the city, everybody can't get out of the hood. I'm the closest thing that they have. I think that young black boys and girls should take up the trade of carpentry, plumbing, electrical, drywall. Every house needs someone to build it. How you doing? I'm KC, and I'm the owner of KC Studio at 28 South Blasky Street. I'm from Baltimore, east side of course, and I'm a welding artist. So I do metal work, I tattoo metal, and I create just about anything you can think of. I started doing metal work with my aunt and uncle um, at their company at Seymour Welding. I actually was in college. It was my going through my sophomore year, but things went bad. I wound up not being able to go back to the D1 college I was wrestling at because I got injured. I was homeless at the time. I went to sleep at my, my aunt and uncle with their bench outside of their, um, their house. And they came home. My aunt nursed me back to health and then my uncle gave me a job. I've been welding ever since. It saved my life and it put me in a position to where I never needed a job again. If I can show somebody else welding in a different form, a different light, and they like, you know what, I think that's interesting. I might want to try that. I'll do it. And I've taught a lot of people how to weld. And I'm showing a lot of young, young men out there like, it's more than you can do. You can have a nice car, a nice home, and not ever sell drugs. You trying to stay afloat just like everybody else, but I'm going to show you a way. The art scene here is amazing in Baltimore. It's not New York, it's not Atlanta, um, it's not Miami, it's Baltimore. We're our own genre, we're our own way. We're gritty, it's small to more, so everybody knows everybody. And that dynamic is so raw. But then it's also the business aspect of it, like, people are trying different ways, different stuff. It's so much more, and I love that. I, I do a lot of my best work when I'm surrounded by other artwork. It just really, motivated me and inspired me. There have been times when I'll be welding in here and I'll have somebody painting or somebody sewing. Um, and it's just, I'm drawn from that energy. I'm drawn to that, that, that Baltimore-ness. Welding has allowed me to make money, so I'm not a starving artist. So when I see somebody who does something talented, sure, let's, let's work together. Let's collab, let's do whatever, but I'm gonna support you. The project I worked for the, for the Upton Planning Committee, it was these big metal music notes. After it was complete, there was money in the budget for it to be painted. And I was like, well, I'm done working on this. So I'm like, I'm reached out to a couple of my artist friends. I didn't care. I was like, look, you want to come out and paint this project? I'm going to pay you a couple of dollars and you can paint it. It's already in the budget, so come on. And we did. I don't know what it is, but I was born to be a father. Like, this is like the best. Like, Welding is great, don't get me wrong. I love welding, I love my artwork, but spending time with my son and my family is, that's, that's the top for me. My name is Danny. I'm the owner of Illicit Rag Vintage, located in Baltimore, Maryland, and I've been in business for four and a half, almost five years. Materials back then, they were actually meant to last because people didn't know when they were gonna get another coat. And people had time. The world wasn't moving so fast. So it would literally, someone would enjoy spending a year on making one coat. So if somebody took a year to make your coat, every stitch on this coat <laughs> is here to stay. <laughs> everything is mass produced and everything is remade now. There's rarely something that is unique and new. 
like new, like never been done before. I feel that vintage pieces have more character. So I feel like they are definitely more relatable to artists and creatives and that's mostly who I tend to have come to my business and support it. Here, it is that culture, it's that realness, that rawness that you can't get anywhere else. When I was younger, I used to go away to get inspired. But my friends inspire me too. There are people here that also inspire me. However, I had to figure out what it was they were missing. And like I said, the platform wasn't given to them or a lot of the resources that they need because there are creatives here, tons of creatives here. But the issue has always been lack of resources. Instead of complaining about, oh, the fashion isn't what I wanted to be here or I want people to have originality, I supply that. That's my goal, that's why everything is specially curated, that's why I make sure that I have statement pieces that probably will complement you, your personality, and give you the opportunity to be a little different than what your neighbor looks like. My name is Ikeo Evans, I'm from East Baltimore, and I'm the owner of Ikeo's Glorious Heroes. I, I like to create things that is something personable to the heart, you know, because my mom's, uh, you know, she passed of a heart attack. So I didn't realize until after she passed, I'm talking about maybe two or three years later, which was in 2015, 2016, as I was creating the Ikeo's Glorious Heroes, that Ikeo in Japanese, it means glorious hero. And it also means bright man. And being though that she died of a heart attack, I put all the tags onto the left side. And the story is Akio's Glorious Heroes represents the comic books that my mother would force me to read. And I would lie and say, I, 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 yeah, I read the comic. And my mother was like, oh, okay, well, what happened to this? Uh, nah, she would take like five comic books out of my collection and have me read one because she knew that I was a kid that didn't understand the value of reading. So she figured that reading comic books would help me. So everything that I create, whether it be, you know, Bright Boy, um, whether it be the Baltimore Diamonds, it coincides with uh, Akio being a bright man. Diamonds shine brightly, you know what I mean? And then with the heroes and the hearts, it all adds to that story that creates value to what I'm able to give others and what I'm able to do for myself. I do do a lot of research. That's really the basis of what I create and maybe that's probably why people who collect my art gravitated to it a lot more because it is something personable, it is some things that I dig deep in that they don't even realize or think that nobody knows. I feel like that is what the heart represents, you know? Even in, when you look at the heart in those last three letters, it's art, you get what I'm saying? So I remember one of the, one of the things that Michael K. Williams said when I finally was able to make his piece, he said, art makes you feel something. You get what I'm saying? He said, I can go to Barney's, I can get Gucci or whatever you said, but none of that stuff is gonna do what you did for me. You made me feel something. So that's what really art is, you get what I'm saying? So I kind of like, Akio's Glorious Heroes, it consists of hearts and heroes. And it represents being your own hero, you know what I mean? I stay here because at a young age, like a lot of people ask me like, oh, how is you able to work your full-time gig and do what you do? And it's only because I feel like I get that rawness from here. I get, you know, the creative, creative spot from here. I have my own store in Spokane, Washington. I've traveled over the West Coast knowing nobody. And I gambled everything on my dream and my hustle because I was hustling out there. So I done did all that at a young age. I know how that is. I tasted it. And then I'm seeing that a lot of people are coming to the city that are seeing the value in the city. And there's people that live in the city and they don't even see the same value because they're so close to it. <laughs>